here to give you an update on the research project, my research project, uh, Electrospun Fibers for Solar Thermal Processes. Um, I've been conducting this research at the University of Maryland under the guidance of Dr. Greg Jackson in the, within the University of Maryland Energy Research Center. Over the past year and a half, the Hendricks Fellowship has been instrumental in enabling me to construct a high throughput electrospinning system capable of making enough material to run these experiments that we were looking to do. Uh, in addition to that, the, the ability to travel um, and begin collaborations has been invaluable, helping me to make contacts within a very interesting field and also to get the data we desired um, for these materials. So uh, in the prior year, I was able to use the Hendricks resources to travel to the AICHE, the American Institute of Chemical Engineers meeting in Pittsburgh, um, where I met a recently graduated student um, who works at the University of Minnesota in the Solar Energy Engineering Laboratory there. Um, during our conversations, he, he explained to me that they had uh, recently acquired a rapid heating infrared furnace that would be perfect for conducting some of the experiments I was looking to do. So um, just following the first of the year, uh, I was able to travel out to Minnesota to work with Dr. Venstrom and Dr. Davidson uh, to conduct those experiments and they're actually, the results um, came out quite nicely. They, they look promising and we're currently in the midst of our collaboration. Okay, so the basic idea here is that we have a solar thermal process in which we input concentrated sunlight, carbon dioxide, and water. And what we get out of this process is split CO2 and split water. So we get CO and hydrogen, which we can then input into a, a downstream process to produce renewable fuel. This process looks a little bit like uh, we have shown in the schematic where we have a centralized power tower. A large field of mirrors focuses the sun's rays to the top of the power tower where we can achieve really high temperatures. Uh, with these really high temperatures we can drive endothermic uh, reduction processes where we reduce a metal oxide and then reoxidize it with CO2 or water at a lower temperature to produce our CO and hydrogen. And this cycle would look a little bit like the one shown and what we're proposing is the use of the ceramic fibers that we're developing here at the University of Maryland. The process we use to make these fibers is known as electrospinning. What you see here is a wire coil spinneret being rotated through a bath of solution which contains polymer, solvent, and the ceramic precursors. A large electric field is then applied between the wire coil spinneret and a collector located above. So if we take a look at uh, what's going on at the collector, turn out the lights and we can see a large number of fibers streaming towards the rotating wire drum collector. And after a certain amount of time, what we produce at the collector is a low density uh, mat of non-woven fiber material. By putting the non-woven mat of material into a furnace uh, in air, we can burn off all of the polymer, leaving us with ceramic fibers. And then we take these ceramic fibers and put, it in, put them into our simulated process and see how they perform. Here you see some beating up of uh, the fibers as they're cycled to a medium temperature range. If we go too high in temperature, we do decompose the material. However, maintaining the fiber structure into the medium temperature range is really encouraging because it means that we're maintaining a higher surface area in our material which leads to faster fuel production and potentially more rapid cycling. This is encouraging because, uh, well, for two reasons. First, we can produce more fuel. And second, um, the, the structured ceramic material seems to be holding up uh, better than other conventional um, or recently proposed structured ceramics for these cycles. In the coming year, I'm looking forward to traveling to uh, present some of this work 
um, both at a solar energy engineering conference and at a more general electrochemical society meeting um, where I'll be discussing some of the intricacies of these high temperature measurements. In addition, there are several papers currently underway, one concerning the collaboration between the University of Maryland and the University of Minnesota, and another um, concerning some of the experiments performed here at the University of Maryland.